Hello and welcome to No Sevens Dice Club College Football Predictions Week 7, 2024. Uh, so last week, uh, I said if I had a bad week, I was going to blame it on COVID. So I'm blaming it on COVID because my brain was not working last week. I, I went and watched uh, those games on Saturday and I was thinking to myself, what happened to No Sevens? So COVID happened. Uh, it was my first losing week. Uh, we went two and four, and I got some ground to make up because right now we're uh, sixteen and ten for the season. So, you know what was looking like a great start uh, through the first five weeks uh, is quickly uh, being erased. So we got some ground to make up. It was our first losing week uh, in over a year. I think our last losing week was week six of last year. Uh, so. Need to continue on because I like 43 and 28, as you can see above. So 16 and 10, uh, not a lot of room for error. Um, but let's get over to the to the notes because I know you guys are waiting on this. And I want to get over this as fast as possible because I got a lot of things to do uh, this week also. And I'm sorry I'm get, getting this information out to you at the very last moment. But let's go over it. Uh, so we discussed the first losing week of the season. <laughs> Uh, hopefully there's not many more and um, you know we've had consecutive winning months uh, I think the last one was in 21 or in 22 I can't remember uh, where we didn't have a winning month all right so Bama goes down in Vandy I mean <laughs> I thought I was still having COVID when I uh, when I saw this game and I wanted to make sure I was I was in full health uh, because I was like, okay, may, may, maybe it's the COVID brain that's not working here, and I'm not seeing the score correctly. But at halftime, it was 23-7. to 7. Vandy was beating up on Alabama. In fact, Alabama never even um, had uh, the lead in that game. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. And Nick Saban said it uh, before uh, that game that – this is uh, going to be a a, 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 a test. A uh, uh, he, he used another word, uh, but he, anyway, it was a test because they were going to see a lot of stuff that Alabama was not used to seeing, and sure enough, it, it wasn't. And before you knew it, uh, one team came to play, and the other team, I think, uh, was hung over from the Georgia win. So you want to talk about an extreme high for Alabama beating Georgia? With the whole entire world seeing you and then being, you know, buried underneath Vanderbilt Stadium. I mean, and speaking of stadium, they destroyed their stadium. Do they not realize, Vandy, that it took them a full year to hang the scoreboard up in their stadium? Because it was hanging on suspension by Crane all last season. So now they ripped off the goalposts, they threw them in the water. What are they going to use this week or, or whenever they have their next home game? You know, they're just going to be like, yeah, just kick it wherever. I mean, they need those goalposts. And, you know, hopefully they can figure out a way to put them back up pretty quickly because uh, they're not quick about a lot of things over in Vandy when it comes to uh, their football team. All right. So the Ducks are in a top four shootout. They're, uh, they're going... Playing at home against Ohio State. This is going to be a great game. I'm glad we're starting to see a lot more great games being played. Uh, I know this really doesn't have anything to do with, uh, you know, the 12-team playoff system yet. These games were scheduled way um, in advance, you know, years ago. So I'm glad that they're starting to finally materialize and hopefully more great games uh, keep on coming. And Ohio State and Oregon, we're going to go over that in a little bit. Really looking forward to that game. Uh, and then I was going to type here, and I forgot to mention, uh, to write it down, but the SEC is in total chaos. Uh, Texas is back at number one. Uh, Georgia's, like, at number six. I mean, it, we're all over the place right now for the SEC. So if you guys are SEC fans like I am, uh, that that whole entire structure is all crazy. You got LSU and Ole Miss playing. And they're saying that if Ole Miss loses to LSU, that's pretty much it for uh, their season. They, uh, they'll they go, if they beat LSU, they have a 72% chance of going into the playoffs. And if they lose, 
they have about a 25 to 27 percent of making it to the playoffs. Uh, and then same thing with LSU. They can't lose either because USC lost uh, to Minnesota. So that was uh, pretty wild. Or did they beat Minnesota? They, they, they lost to somebody. USC lost to somebody. I don't know. I can't think. COVID brain is still going on. We're going to focus on week seven. And we're going to knock out some serious games because I don't have a lot of time. I'm late for another meeting that I need to hop on. And uh, <laughs> just no time for no sevens anymore. Oh, man. All right. So let's get right into it. I'm not pausing the video. We're just going to climb right into these games. So, bam. Here we go. Week seven notes. Week seven notes. Uh, no seven. It's not supposed to be week seven notes. It's supposed to say week seven, 2024. Okay. Just like that. You know, just week seven, 2024. And that is a crazy looking two zero. All right. Anyway, moving on. Ohio State at Oregon. Uh, this is the first true test for Ohio State. Their offense has just been running full throttle, uh, just eliminating Sister Mary of the Poor teams. Now they're going to face their real challenge with Oregon. Oregon has struggled a little bit, you know, with some teams. You know, we covered them over the past few weeks with some teams. Uh, but they've been getting the job done. Uh, Gabriel, the uh, the quarterback, we went over him last week for Oregon. He's doing a phenomenal job with uh, Dan Landing over there in Oregon. And um, Jim Day, the head coach for Ohio State, he's, you know, this is going to be a very close game. I think it's going to be decided by about five points. So minus three and a half. We're going to be kind of looking at, like, if you might want to buy down at half a point down to three. Uh, there's going to be a lot of movement on this. So get wherever you feel comfortable. If this thing creeps up to Ohio State minus five, I will kind of fade this game. But even at minus three and a half, this is still a good bet for Ohio State because I think Ohio State's offense is going to keep rolling. Um, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm thinking about it. I do like this game. It's going to be a very, very close game. This is going to be the game of the week. Like I said, game day is going to be there. Uh, it's it's going to be a terrific game. But I really like Ohio State just to keep on winning. Give Oregon, uh, I think it's their, going to be the first loss of the season. And Ohio State's going to win it, but it's going to be very tight. So like I said, I will buy down at half a point. But since I can't buy down half a point, I'm just going to go ahead and take Ohio State minus three and a half and lock it in. Okay, next up is Penn State uh, minus five and a half at USC. USC is going through some, some struggles like they always do <laughs> with Lincoln Riley as the head coach. Um, they're still progressing, but they're supposed to win games that they're supposed to win. And that was going even including for last week. And now they got a really true test. And this is what's great is that we're getting to see Penn State, you know, play at USC. See them on the, um, over on the West Coast. So this is going to be a really good game with that offense and defense that Penn State offers. And it's going to be interesting to see how USC bounces back. This is going to be a major challenge. This is going to be like USC playing LSU. Uh, only a little bit more of a tier of difficulty. And they barely squeak by uh, LSU because of the mistakes that LSU did. They just couldn't catch the right breaks. USC caught all the lucky breaks in the LSU game. With Penn State being a step up of competition from LSU, I do like Penn State to win this game by 7 points. So at minus 5.5, I feel pretty confident that Penn State's going to win this game. Uh, and... They're going to cover the spread. So let's lock it in. Penn State minus five and a half. All right. Next up is Florida at Tennessee. Tennessee, I mean, just completely melted down in the fourth quarter against Arkansas. Uh, they were up two touchdowns. I think they were even up by 17 points at one point in time in that game. And then Arkansas, I mean, with what, three minutes left of the game, just came back and just won the game and stole the win from Tennessee. Uh, for Florida, it's just a dumpster fire. There's there's no saving Billy Napier's uh, career over there. They're already shopping head coaches. Uh, they just can't fire Billy Napier because there's nobody on his staff that has any head coaching experience. 
So this is just a complete disaster. Uh, rumors are that players are already trying to get out uh, into the transfer portal. Uh, there's going to be a mass exodus come December uh, when the transfer portal is officially available and the season is over. Um, the next head coach, whoever takes over Florida, uh, is got a lot of work cut out for them. And there's talks that Lane Kiffin's going to go, but Lane Kiffin is not leaving Ole Miss. Uh, there's other, other rumors that Nick Saban is going to come out of retirement and coach Florida. Guys, if, if, if Nick Saban... Uh, comes out of retirement and coaches Florida, I will believe in the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus to come give me a big old bag of $100 bills or something like that because Nick Saban ain't coming out of retirement. He loves his job too much on game day. Uh, so there, there's a lot of rumors uh, swirling around. Uh, you know, there's talks that, you know, so another uh, couple other head coaches that they mentioned, I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, that are going to come back. So who knows, but whoever takes over this Florida job has got a lot of work cut out for them. And it's not going to be a turnkey success. This is going to take years to build because of the amount of player loss um, that happened in Florida. Kind of like what happened to LSU right after uh, Ed Ogeron left. It, it, we're just finally starting to a little bit turn the corner, I guess you can say, at LSU. That's how Florida's going to be. It's going to be about a three- or four-year process before they really turn that corner again, depending on the head coach. Uh, but for this game, the over-under is 55 and a half. Florida's got no defense. Tennessee's got no defense. Uh, Billy Napier's got nothing to lose. So I like the over in this game. I think it's just going to be just slinging the football down. There's going to be no rules at this game. Let's just go out and have fun. It's being played at Tennessee. Tennessee is going to want the win. They're going to get the win, but it's going to be a high-scoring game. Uh, either Tennessee is going to score 80 points or Florida and Tennessee are both going to score about 30 each, and we're going to get the over. So let's take the over at 55 and a half. Okay, there it is. Locked in. Over 55 and a half. Next up, the Red, what is it, the Red River Shootout, I think that, that's what they call it, or is it Red River... I don't know. I can't always say it every year and I always forget about it, but I always pick this game every year. And you think I would know it because I pick the game every year, ever since 2019. And I usually pick the winner. Uh, so Texas is minus 14 and a half. Uh, Quinn Ewers is going to be the starting quarterback. There's all sorts of rumors that Arch Manning is getting ready to transfer because he's not the starting quarterback. Man, I don't know who started that rumor, but don't believe it, okay? Arch Manning is very happy in Texas. He knows he's the next man up, and he's not going anywhere. You know, he really he's really happy with Texas. And uh, Quinn Ewers is going to do a great job over there. Oklahoma is going through all sorts of turmoil like they usually do. Um, they're not going to fire their head coach this year, but they're just going through a lot of difficulties. Texas is ranked number one. They're going to keep on winning because they got to start getting the eye candy for the committee so that way they can stay number one. Uh, and uh, Quinn Ewers is coming back, and so he wants to prove that he is the quarterback for Texas. So I would buy down half a point from Texas to make it minus 14. But look for Texas just to steamroll Oklahoma and this great red rival. Is it red rival? A red river rival? Red whatever it's called. The shootout, <laughs> you know, at the Texas State Fair. So let's just call it that. Let's take Texas minus 14 and a half. Like I said, I would buy down this half a point. If this thing goes over 17 on Texas side, I would fade this game. But right now, I like Texas uh, to win the game and to cover at minus 14. And I will lock it in at 14 and a half. All right, there it is. Ba-bam, locked in. Okay, next up, I threw this game in late. South Carolina at Bama, minus 21 and a half. I talked enough about Bama. They're, 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 uh, they're just not the team. South Carolina got rolled by Ole Miss. You know, that score was 28 to 3. I'm looking for Alabama just to literally destroy South Carolina. Unfortunately, South Carolina has got to be the human tackling dummy once again. Once when Ole Miss lost to Kentucky, they were the tackling dummy. Uh, for Ole Miss. Now, Bama's going to come in 
play even more pissed off, hair on fire, wanting to literally destroy something on the field to prove that 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 they're not a one hit wonder and um and pretty much go from there. I was gonna mention something else about the head coach, but it doesn't matter. Uh not a lot of time I want to spend with this because I gotta go for my meeting. But let's just go ahead. I really like Bama to win this game. And I like Bama to cover at minus 21 and a half. I will buy down that half a point to minus 21. And we'll go from there. So let's lock it in. All right. There you go. Bama minus 21 and a half. Okay. So we're going to our parlay real quick. I was a little aggressive with this parlay. But it's okay because I think we're going to do pretty good. I like it. Uh, so the money line picks are going to be Bama, Mizzou, Texas, Penn State, and Notre Dame. So I'm really counting on Penn State to win that game because you remember we took them over here where it said Penn State minus 5.5, and, and I do like them to win that game. So I locked in Penn State. If you don't want to put Penn State in there, that's fine. You can take them out. But you can put Bama, Mizzou, Texas, and Notre Dame to win their games. Notre Dame is playing Stanford, and that is always a really good game to watch uh, if you're looking for something to watch later on. Uh, but guys, I wanted to mention to you, uh, Florida's getting a lot of attention. Keep Florida in your prayers. But please don't forget uh, North Carolina. Um, they're kind of just being forgotten about because of all the hurricanes going on in Florida. But Asheville and Chimney Rock and all the, all those places are uh, just decimated. And they really need your help uh, and your support. Uh, at the end of October, I'm going to give another $200 uh, to uh, the Salvation Army or um, or whatever uh, charity is donating to um, the hurricane victims in North Carolina and see if we can't do something great with these picks and, uh, and go from there. So hopefully we have a great winning week and we can donate even more money to those people in North Carolina and don't forget about them, you know, do whatever you can to help them out, volunteer your time, send money, resources, whatever you can. And, uh, the people in Florida too, if you want to give over there, don't forget about those people, but good luck on your picks and no sevens is running late on this meeting. <laughs> They're calling me on my phone right now as I'm shooting this video. So no sevens. We'll see you on the flip side.